What is up YouTube? Let's talk a little bit about Euclidean rhythms. What are they and how to effectively use them in your music? So I'm going to show you guys how to create a variety of different sounds and apply these rhythmic patterns to both the modulations as well as use them to create rhythmical patterns. So yeah, stay tuned. Let's have a look. Euclidean rhythms is by the Wikipedia definition as follows. The greatest common divisor of two numbers is used rhythmically, giving the number of beats and silences, generating almost all of most important world music rhythms, except Indian. The beats in the resulting rhythms are as equidistant as possible. So what does this all mean? And more specifically, what does it mean for music producers? So Euclidean rhythms, as described in the 2005 paper, is a sort of mathematical approach to creating world music rhythms. Godfrey Toussaint had observed that with a function that he had created or a use of numbers, he was able to mimic a very large amount of popular world music rhythms. So a lot of explanations on the topic are very mathematical and for a lot of us sort of more sound and music people, it might be a little bit advanced. And I'm going to try to break it down for you guys and try to explain it in a bit more of an easier way to digest. So to keep things simple, I'm going to talk about uh, Euclidean rhythms that are based on a total amount of steps of 16. That being said is you can get some really interesting polyrhythmic patterns by playing with the total amount of notes. But to keep things simple and easier to digest, we're going to talk about Euclidean rhythms based on a 16 step sequence. So the idea of creating a Euclidean rhythm is that the spaces in between the hits are as equidistant as possible. For example, if we've got a Euclidean rhythm of four beats, that would result in our regular 4-4 pattern. As you can see, I've drawn here, the thicker lines represent where your kicks would be in a regular 4-4 dance music type pattern. So this would be essentially a Euclidean rhythm of 4 over 16. As you can see, the gaps are equidistant and there's three placed in between. So it gets a little bit tricky when you have uneven numbers, but as long as you space the uneven gaps out, it will result in a Euclidean rhythm. So I'm going to start with the easy ones and I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a sort of example of what these sort of look like on a timeline. So as you can see, we've spaced three hits into our 16. So three isn't usually divisible by 16, but that gap at the end is what gives the rhythm a little bit of swing or syncopation. And that's the system that these kind of like world music genres are based around. Let's have a look at some of the other, some of the other examples that aren't regular sort of musical 4-4 four, four divisors like 4, 8 and 16 and so on. Let's look at dividing five into our Euclidean rhythm. So just in case you guys aren't seeing a sort of pattern start to emerge here, um, let's have a look at the Euclidean rhythm of six. So in case you haven't picked up quite yet, the creation of Euclidean rhythms is concentrating more on the gaps and the, the sort of repetition of those gaps in between each of the steps. So essentially, you can create a Euclidean rhythm both without knowing what number you want to end up with in the end and taking the number that you want to end up with in the end and working backwards. So there's kind of two ways of generating this type of rhythm. So let's say, for example, just out of our head, create a sort of repetition on the paper. Let's try something different. Like let's go for. And here we've made the Euclidean rhythm for 11. Thirteen would look like this. So you're probably wondering, like, what does this have to do with actual music production? And how can you apply it to your actual tracks? 
And I'm sure you guys are also looking for some sort of audio examples and stuff like that. So this is why it's so cool. So I've got an init serum over here. I've pre-baked myself some Euclidean rhythms LFOs. So you're not limited to doing this in serum. You can do it with gatekeeper, LFO tool, pretty much anything. Yeah, I'm gonna show you guys in serum because this is what everyone on my channel knows and I'm sure everyone here can apply it to their patches. So let's, for example, drag this onto this level control over here. So now we're creating a sort of rhythmic sort of element to the amplitude of the sound. And let's turn this down to one bar. So this is what we've created. So this is really powerful. I mean, you can apply it to pretty much any of your sort of existing patches and stuff like that. So let's do a sort of classic kind of like FM type thing that I've explained a few times. Turn this octave down, level down, and let's turn this FM from B up. And now we've created like a FM rhythmical sort of sound using those Euclidean rhythms that we've created. So I'm gonna show you guys how to create these. I'm gonna show you guys a really quick website that uh, sort of has a Euclidean rhythm calculator that just makes it easier than kind of doing all the maths and stuff behind it. So. So you can create squelches and all sorts of stuff like that. That's why I like to do it inside Serum because uh, you're not limited to only applying it as like an effect or something like that. You can apply it as sort of modulations and stuff in the patch and get sort of really experimental with it. So anyway, let's look at creating our own bank of Euclidean rhythms to use. So all my $5 Patreon supporters, I will give you a folder with all these LFO shapes and any of the ones that I create during this episode. So there's a bunch of stuff that you guys can use uh, to kickstart uh, creating rhythms and stuff. You don't have to like recreate this from scratch, but just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to go through how to create, uh, how to turn these sort of Euclidean rhythms into serum LFO shapes. So let's do this. I'm going to init preset. So this is the website where you can go and it actually, you know, but just punch in the numbers here and it generates these uh, Euclidean rhythms for you to, you know, punch into whatever software you're using. It can be MIDI notes, uh, it can be modulation patterns. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to show you modulation patterns because there's some really interesting stuff that you can do with this, um, specifically for like Cytron squelches and stuff like that. So yeah, let's do this. Yeah, I'm going to post the link in the description to where you can find this website. So all you need to do is you just put in here, you know, total notes 16, or you can choose eight. I'm choosing 16 for this. And what we're going to have to do here in Serum is also just turn this grid up to 16, just so that it snaps our little nodes to 16. And on a side note, we can actually just go here and turn this to flat zero, just makes things a little bit easier to start from. And so here, for example, change to whatever number we want to sort of input from. I've kind of pre-baked a bunch of these into shapes and I've saved them into a folder here. Um, so I'm gonna upload these for all my $5 Patreons. Um, so you guys must definitely check that out if you're on my Patreon supporters list. As you can see, I've skipped over the kind of really simple stuff like two, four and eight but I've got some really cool stuff here to kind of like use as a starting point to play with. But I'm gonna show you guys quickly how to create your own. So let's say for example, we want to create a Euclidean rhythm using something like seven, an uneven number, just to make things a little bit interesting. So this has given us this pattern. So we can apply this to the steps on our grid here in Serum. So it's a step, rest, rest, step, rest, step, Rest, step, rest, rest, step, rest, step, rest, step. So you should have something that looks like this. A single column, three columns, three columns. And now we can go ahead and remove these nodes by just double clicking on them to create like some spikes and stuff like that. So from here, it's super simple. If you've been watching my tutorials, then I'm sure you know how to do this. You just drag it onto the level and you've got a Euclidean rhythm in Serum. So we're also gonna to wanna to turn this down to a bar just to make it sensible because it's uh, otherwise it's like way too fast. So here what you can do is you can go save shape and obviously create a folder for yourself with all your Euclidean rhythms and stuff like that. You can create all sorts of variations and stuff. So like I said, I've already created a folder with a bunch of them. So what I usually do is I will just then hold alt and you know cycle through while it's playing with a loop with some MIDI in it and stuff. So let me just get this going quick. So 
so yeah, anyway, like I said, this is cool for creating squelches and stuff like that. But here, for example, we might want to create multiple of these kind of modulation patterns. So let's drag, um, hold Alt and drag LFO1 over to LFO2. And now we've created a second shape. So LFO1 is now controlling our level and LFO2 we can drag over to control the course pitch over here. And we might just want to hold Alt Shift and click like that, just so that it's a one way sort of modulation. So here we can actually go and, you know, create some variation with these like curve nodes, you know, specifically if we want to do this like kind of like squelchy, side type stuff. Let's create some variations there. So we can also create a third LFO if we want to just drag it over, it'll be easier. We can, you know, cycle through the different shapes that we've made. Let's set this to a band pass filter, band 24. And let's set this to modulate the cutoff of this guy. So here you're not limited to, uh, you know, using this, you know, one bar timing, you can actually make it a little bit sort of slower. So let's set this down, all of these down a little bit. And really interesting stuff starts to happen when you alter all of them. You know, say for example, create like different variations. So I'm gonna go wild here. I'm gonna load up, you know, different, like different ones of these and create all sorts of crazy patterns just based on the kind of like, this kind of like stuff over here. So I've created a bunch of variations here, um, all sort of modulating different stuff in the patch. So here, let's say, um, like I've showed in a previous tutorial, I like to use this distortion set to down sample and then I'll mix it down quite a bit. And that creates like a sort of almost digital kind of tone that kind of layers into the sound. You'll check what I'm talking about now. And another cool thing to do is to vary the starting points of each of these kind of like rhythmical patterns. You do that by clicking on the node over here and you click set start point. So, I mean, just, you know, randomly just, you know, choose any of them and see, you know, create these different variations, which you can like render out as audio and then, you know, place around your track and build up multiple variations of these kind of like squelch sounds. So something like this.
so you're not limited to creating squelch sounds, obviously, um, like I showed you earlier. Um, you can do all sorts of cool stuff, like use a patch that you've already created and then just apply, you know, Euclidean rhythms, either using something like LFO tool or, you know, set the modulation of your actual uh, oscillators themselves. So you can do all sorts of cool stuff, like, you know, let's do like a simple FM patch. Cool, so we've created a bunch of loops that we can use and we can arrange and create all sorts of different variations. You know, we can chop them up and resample them like I've explained in previous tutorials and stuff like that. But now we've created like all these different kind of like rhythmical patterns that we can choose from, you know, see what fits where and stuff like that. So I like to add delay onto pretty much everything. Um, so let's see what these sound like with some effects and stuff like that. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. A big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel. I'm going to be posting this folder of Elevo shapes to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, head on over to the link that's going to be somewhere on the screen right now. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.